Okay. Alrighty. So we're going to pick up, we're going to go right into it today. We're going to pick up where we left off yesterday. We were creating documentation for the ESP8266 Arduino core for Deploy the Fleet. Today, I want to get started at least. Um, I don't have a ton of time today, but I want to get started on the ESP32 version of that. So uh, yesterday we, we were working with the Feather Huzzah 8266. It's this guy right here. You can see, there you go. And today we're going to work on doing the, uh, this is the ESP32 Room 32 module, um, but it is the ESP32 Dev Kit C version 4. So it looks like that. I need a better camera. Anyway, uh, same thing. It's just development board, but instead of an ESP8266, it's got an ESP32 uh, on it. And so we want to support both. There are different libraries. There's an Arduino core library for the 8266, and there's one for the ESP32. And so what I have here is I wrote an Arduino library for the ESP8266, but what we want to do now is create a similar library for the ESP32 so that it's super easy. And then what I think I'm going to do is call that good enough as far as stuff that's ready for launch. So I'll have the uh, both the 8266 and the 32 support. I won't have... Um, quick start guides for the IDF version of that, but I feel like the Arduino core versions are a little more maker friendly to get people started. If you're using the ESP IDF, you probably can figure out how to get this connected, but I will make um, content for all of that, but I, I don't wanna wait to launch until I have content for every possible scenario. And that's part of sort of the balance of, getting it out there and getting people to look at it versus having everything be perfect and something I struggle with. So I'm a, I think I'm gonna just go with the two Arduino core libraries to get started and call that good enough for launch. So let's get this thing started. What I will do is they're, they're pretty similar. I'm actually gonna launch the Arduino IDE. Hopefully it pulls up on another screen. There we go, because it's got my Wi-Fi username and password in it. I'm going to open up some recent ones here. Dev kit C. Okay, it's kind of a bigger one, but I did test this, so I know that this works. But I think the I think they'll be really similar in how they look. And so what I'm going to do actually is while I'm here in GitHub, let's just copy this, create a new repo, make it public. And we're going to call it the Arduino ESP 32 update. Uh, shoot, what's the description? I want the description to be Uh, that was the description right here. Take that and we'll say library to integrate deploy the fleet with ESP32 Arduino core projects and create, uh, create repository. Cool. All right. And now we just need to write code for it. So let's actually... I think what we can actually do here is let's come into dev and I'm just going to copy and paste that. We'll do a rename and I'm gonna actually name it more what the repo is. Actually, I won't because on my local machine here. DTF Arduino underscore ESP32. 
cool. And then I'm going to actually get rid of the dot git folder so that it's not a repo. Get rid of these because it's going to be really, really similar. And cool. Now what I'll do is I'll open up a new VS code. And we'll just actually go full screen with it for now. We'll do open folder. There we go. Okay, and now we'll just change things. And just get this all done. It's meant for projects that currently use the ESP32 Arduino core. And there is no read the docs for that, which I've always thought was weird. Um, it's just the GitHub repository. Um, so we'll just replace this. This is just going to be ESP32 update, get firmware update. And same license and everything. Cool. And then the license is the same. The keywords, this is going to be a little bit different. ESP32 update. And then library, we're going to call it. Okay, and we're going to set it back to version that. I am the author, I am the maintainer. Device control, and then uh, give it the new repo. SP32 update, the architecture is now going to be 32 and include, we're going to include ESP32 update. Okay. Uh, Git ignore will be the same thing. It's nice and simple. Um, we'll update this. Okay. Yeah. Cause we're going to have to update all that code. Uh, and that's fine. We'll come, we'll do that last. And then source. We're gonna want to rename these. Rename. And we'll see how different the libraries truly are <laughs> in how hard this is. It's just, a, this is what I love about the pro tip. If you haven't used Visual Studio Code, one of the things I love is you can see as just as I highlight that, it highlights four instances of it. If you just do control D uh, over and over, it'll highlight all of them. And then we can just change them all at once. And we don't have to change it in four four places and we know that and we don't we're not gonna fat finger anything or have any issues there. Like it just it updates them all at the same time, which is a pretty cool feature. Uh, the API is gonna be the same, so I think that's it for the header file. Uh, for here, um, let's do the same thing actually. Let's highlight that and just control D. Okay, there's only two instances, so. Okay, SP32. And then these headers are all gonna be different for the SP32, not all of them, but um, 
but I think the general flow is mostly the same. And for that, I have it off screen here. I can't put everything on the screen at once. I guess I could actually make this a little bigger. So people can see. All right. And so the headers that we're going to include are a little bit different. Dev kit C is actually what I want to have open. Okay. So instead of this ESP8266 Wi-Fi.h, we're going to include a different setup. The headers are a little different for... I don't even know if we need to include Arduino.h, come to think of it. I'm going to try and leave it off and see what happens, see if it compiles. Uh, but... Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, multi, HTTP client, HTTP update. That's all correct. And then we're going to include our header file, which again, doesn't have any other headers, which is right. We're going to use the same certificate that we used before. We're going to use the same set system time that we did before. I don't think anything's different there. Um, this, I am just now realizing that's a lot, that's, that's half a second while we wait for it to set the time. I don't know if we need it to be that long. I don't know what, well, this is actually from their sample, so we'll leave it 500 for now. If that becomes a big deal, then we can change it later. Um, okay, so that says system time same, the root certificate is the same. We will uh, get firmware update. This is where things are going to get a little bit different. So we're going to do a Wi-Fi secure client like this. So that's the same. And then it's not set trust anchors. Yeah, we don't have to do this either. This X509 list. So we can get rid of that. Okay, if set time, then set system time. And then we don't need bare SSL either. We can just say Wi-Fi client secure client. And we do client dot set CA cert. And then we just pass it this root certificate uh, construct star instead of this. This is a little bit different on the 32. That timeout, we'll leave it at 20 seconds for now. We can maybe make that configurable later. And then we have our update URL, which we pass in. My URL and the current, yeah, the current version. Yep, so that's all the same, HTT. Oh, it's just HTTP update, not ESP. All right, so that's a little different. It's just HTTP update. And these are the same HTTP update, no updates. So that all is the same. I think that's it. I think that's all we need to do for this to work on the ESP32. Okay. So the way to test this now, the way I'll test it to get started is 
I'm just gonna do a brand new sketch. So you could, I could, I could zip this up and include it as a library, and it'll add to my libraries. But the way to to test this just to get started is we can just do um, sketch add file. So we'll do add file, and then we can go into home dev. Um, ESP32 source, and then I'll just add them manually like this. And then what that does, if I remember correctly, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Nope, how do I get rid of that? Wrong file. Um, wait, delete. That. Make sure you want to delete. Let me just make sure that that's in the spot that I think it's supposed to be in. Um, home Arduino. Oh, I haven't saved the sketch because it's brand new. Um, whatever. I'm gonna say okay. I'm gonna say sketch. Add file, and it's again home dev ESP32 source, and now I want the CPP file. Okay, and now if I save this, it's going to ask me, it's the November 10th sketch. That's fine, I don't care what it's called. I believe, just for, yeah, okay, so uh, here's what my November 10th, a sketch looks like it's got both the CVP and the H. So it just copies them over there. So we're all good there. And uh, I'm dropping frames like crazy. Sorry on the stream. I guess I can lower the it right anyway i'm gonna leave it for now it's fine okay oh, i don't like that it's dropping so many frames i don't know that i can change it while i'm midstream here All right, well, I changed it. And just for a note, I changed it about 18 minutes in, so I wonder if that'll change the, the output. I've got 1058 drop frames. Okay, moving on. So in my sketch here, I'm gonna replace it with some simple code. So from right here, I'm gonna want to, I don't think I need to include I know I need to include these. I don't. I might not need to include these in the header though. Um, I'll come back to that. I know I need those two for sure, and then I need a, a Wi-Fi multi. Recent I'm gonna do something similar that I did in the other one, which is pound fine Wi-Fi SSID pound define Wi-Fi password. And string. I, I do the current version as a string so that I can use it in a print statement later on. And don't forget the semicolon. And okay, I've got my Wi-Fi multi and then I'm just gonna copy and paste from the 8266 example. 
serial.begin. This is the ESP32 example. And same thing, I just connect to the Wi Fi and then for the loop. Same thing as before. I'm going to hold off on the checked for updates logic because that's the deploy the fleet sauce. And that's it. So first things first, does it compile? It's not, and the reason it's not is because my board's not right. I need to change this tools board. Um, come on, ESP32, and it's just a, it's a dev module. Okay, now let's try to build it. Sweet, and we are all set. Sketch uses 51% of program storage space. No, that's not right at all because it's using the wrong number of bytes. Yeah, so that's okay. So we can write, it's not actually using that much. Um, okay, great. So before I... Well, actually, you know what we need to do is we need to include DTF, DTF underscore ESP32 update dot H. It should build all of it regardless, though. But it might have some smarts to say, OK. So everything's building and I wonder, let's just really quick. I don't, I don't think I need either of these. Uh, I do. I might not need Wi-Fi multi. Okay, that still worked. And it might just be because we're not using it. So we'll come back to it. Okay, so moving right along. I'm going to pull this over punch in my wi-fi credentials and build that and then let's see i'm gonna hold down boot while i plug it in which will put it in boot mode And then we're going to launch the serial monitor. Bring that over here. And then I should be able to upload. Just try and upload. The SP32 program is so much faster than the 8266. It is already finished. And so it's hard resetting. Look at that. Deploy the fleet. ESP32 example, 4321. And then it's going to connect to my Wi-Fi. Hopefully, this is version 1.0.0. Perfect. It'll do that every five seconds. So cool. I'll bring the sketch back over. Just got rid of my Wi-Fi and password. So now, literally, let's just see if I can uncomment this and see if it uh, still compiles. Oh, that's because it's not called the 8266. It's called 32. Let's try that again. Great. So the question is, does that really work? 
Um, and the answer is maybe. Okay. Let's uh, come over here and do uh, app.deploythefleet.io. Log in. Invalid credentials. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna just pop this out so I can make it a little bigger. Okay, so let's create a, uh, well, I created the Twitch. Let's create a new product. And give it a different, yeah, because we don't want it using the same update URL. That is very true. Which was that? Was my update URL in the sketch? Is it sketch? No. Oh, I have one hard coded in there. That's not what I want. Okay. Let's get rid of that. Change that to a pound fine, like we do in the. Oh, actually, I remember yesterday I talked about I wanted to just have the the update in there for the purpose of, yeah, but that's okay. DTF update, and I will define it up at the top. Um... Sorry, I know you can't see any of this. Okay, so let's uh, do create new product. And we'll call this Twitch32. Since the 8266 was just Twitch yesterday, so we'll hit create. It'll give us this. I'm going to just copy it right out of here. Um, what I did was I created a pound to find DTF update. Hit that there. And then I'm just using DTF update down at the bottom. I'll put my SSID and password back in. Um, so I don't think I changed anything. I wasn't keeping track. I didn't change anything in the... Um, I didn't change anything in either of the CPP or the H. And I am dropping frames like crazy again. I don't know why it's dropping so many frames. Like my, like what's the problem? Um, speed test on that. Where are we at? We have internet problems? Go. Normally I'm getting like 50 megs up, so I don't know why I would be dropping. Oh, we are having internet problems. Yikes. Yeah, that's terrible. Oh, but look, my up is still... Uh, it's not great. Hmm. We were having some internet problems here locally today. So. Well, there's nothing I can do about that. The recording must go on. All right, so I copied that. And... 
Today's the 10th, yeah. 10th. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's see if we can get this to work the very first time. I'm going to put my credentials back in. Save it. And I'm going to export compiled binary. I'm going to come to the firmware tab, upload a new firmware. This is going to be version 1.0.0. .0 .0. This is version 1.0.0 for the ESP32. Arduino core. And I have the bin. Just upload it. Okay, 1.0.0, and I'm my current version is 1.0.0. I'm going to Upload that. Cool. And now, oh, I want to upload the sketch as well locally. So I'm going to hit Control U. It should automatically. Okay, it's uploading. So this should reset here in a second. There we go, deploy the fleet, ESP32 example. It's gonna work just like the 8266. It's going to go out to the NTP server, get the correct time so it can use the X509 certificate that uh, is in the library there to make sure that we're going over HTTPS. Everything should be secure. And I can actually probably come to, well, let's just wait and see what happens. Did I put the right? That's taken a little longer than I would expect. So what's happening? Let's come to devices and see if it's checked in at all. Nope. Okay, so we're hung up on something. I wonder if it's not getting the NTP time. Or it's not, you know what, it could be just not connecting to my Wi-Fi. I put the right SSID and password in, I think. Yeah, that should all be correct. Uh, let's just reset it and see what happens. It's this one. There we go. This is version 1.0.0. Okay, now if we come to devices. Sweet. Got our device ID and it's checked in. So that is working just as I would expect it to. So now what I'm going to do is just like yesterday, I'm going to change my version to 2.0.0. And that's all I have to do. I will export it just like I did before. 
next perm right here. Okay, and the sketch is output 902. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to drag it over here and upload that. You can even feel like the upload. Like I hit upload like that. That that took a little bit. Yesterday was super snappy. Ah, I hate having internet problems. Okay. So now that's the default. And what we can do if we've done all this correctly, is simply just hit reset on our device. It's going to wait 3, 2, 1, and we should, uh, we should get version 2.0. Good load. And we can always come to the Devices tab to see... Just refresh to see when it gets the. Mm, it hasn't checked in yet. I wonder if it's having a hard time connecting to my Wi-Fi because we we say wait for Wi-Fi to be connected, and I'm definitely having internet problems. My Stuff's dropping all over the place. All right, let's hit reset again. There we go. Send it version 2.0. Let's watch it update over here. really apologize to anybody watching on Twitch after the fact for all of the drop frames. I'm probably way out of sync audio and video and stuff now. Kind of a crappy stream experience. And I don't know why this thing is having such a hard time like moving around here. Find the Wi-Fi. Find it. Let's see if it actually checked in. Oh well, no, because it's still updating. Oh wait, there it went. It reset. Cool. Power on reset. ETS. So it did update. Ah, this is version two. Look at that. Beautiful. So this should now say version two. Great. Okay. Sweet. Wi-Fi problems aside. Looks like we're all set. So that worked, which means, and I didn't change anything in the library. So um, all I did was change the sketch code. And so now all we need to do is come over here to the examples and change this. And we're gonna change this to be ESP32 update, and then the these includes are different. They are like that. And then we need the SSID, the password, and the update URL. That all looks good. This is now just Wi-Fi multi. The setup, uh, we just changed this to be ESP32. That's all the same. That's all the same. And then the loop, the loop is exactly the same between the two. DTI, well, not exactly. It's 32 update. Get firmware update. 
This is version. Okay, so our final test that we're going to do is we're going to zip it up. We'll say compress and we'll name it ESP32. Uh, no, 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 no. What are we going to name it? We got to name it this. I talked about this yesterday. We're going to call it DTF underscore ESP32 update underscore zero underscore no so underscore one underscore zero underscore zero. Yeah, I like that a lot better. So we'll create that. And then what we will do is we're going to say file new sketch. I'll bring this over here. And the way we'll do this is I'm going to just literally copy the example code. And paste it in here. So this is what somebody would get straight out of the box. And this, and then we'll install the, the library. We'll do sketch, include library, add zip library. And that's gonna be in my dev folder, my ESP32, and it's this version right here. Hit okay. Library added to your libraries, which, In case you're interested, it looks like this. It's in my home, Arduino Libraries. It's the DTF ESP. Just it, it takes the name of the zip file and just makes that the name of the library. Um, and so that looks good. So now um, I'm going to uncomment all four of these lines. And I'm going to make this version 3.0.0. .0 .0. I'm just going to leave these blank for now because I just want to see. Yep, we'll save it as November 10th B. I just want to see if it'll build by including the library like that. And then since Arduino Library Manager hasn't merged my 8266 library, I will just add the 32 as like a comment or I'll, I'll edit the, the text of it. Yeah, this uh, program space is used 66%. That's not right at all. Because this is one point. Well, I guess it's two megs. I'm not sure why it's using such a huge amount of space. So that's version three. And what we're going to do is I've got this running still over here. It's still running version two. I'm going to just go straight, straight with it. I'm going to grab the product URL. Again, we just get that from the dashboard here, Twitch32. We just copy this URL. I will save that as the DTF update URL. And then my SSID, I'm going to set over here off screen so you can't see it. Steal my Wi Fi. And I'm going to save that. And I'm going to just export it. I'm not even going to test it. I'm just going to say export compiled binary version three. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create version three, version 3.0.0. .0. We're going to mark it as a default. This version uses the DTF update code as an Arduino library. As soon as that's finished, okay, and nine eleven, yeah, okay. I'm going to upload that, 
you can see it's the November 10th B, not A anymore, because I created a new one. It's using it. I set the current version to 3.0. I'm going to upload that. Looks like we are doing a little better on bandwidth now, not dropping as many frames. OK, and now, so I have not uploaded anything from the Arduino IDE to the device that's running over here. We seem to have some luck by holding it up magically like this. So we're going to do that again. Uh, but let's bring back up the this. So now what we've done is we've uploaded a new version and deployed the fleet. This could be anywhere in the world, in somebody's garage or attic or garden or somewhere not local to them where they would have to plug it into a laptop to get an update for it. We've created a new version of the firmware that says this is version 3.0.0. It's a very, very special uh, feature update that it outputs that different text. And we've set that as the default. So now all I'm gonna do is reboot this. And again, you can trigger the update by any number of ways. It might have a button, you might tell your user, go press the button. You might have it on a timer that says every three days, check for an update. Um, if you're not doing anything crucial to the main application. And so uh, for our case, just resetting it as a simple example, will do this. So I'm gonna hit the reset button and it's going to reset, three, two, one, and then it should try to connect to the Wi-Fi, then connect to the NTP server. And uh, we can see this over here again on our devices page. Our device is running 2.0. Uh, let's refresh it. So it's already been sent version 3.0 of the firmware, which means currently it is in the middle of flashing itself. Um, and then it will reboot and it will check again. It will know that it, there are no updates because it's on the latest default version. And uh, yeah, here we go. Three, two, one. It's going to check again. It's going to say, oh, you're already on the recent. And then we should start seeing this is version 3.0.0. Look at that. That's, uh, it never gets old. I love it. And then if we come back in to deploy the fleet, you know, we said, hey, you, we've sent 3.0.0. We're waiting confirmation that it succeeded. We'll just hit the refresh button and it'll now say version 3.0.0. Perfect. Okay, so that tells me what? That tells me that our example works correctly. Our library works correctly. And so let's open up a prompt. Uh, it's not a Git repository. So this is where I, I never remember these. Um, and so I just do this. Oh, the readme. Do I need to change the No, I already changed all the... Readme is good. Okay, so literally just... Um, Let's take this and slam it over here. And we'll do git init, empty git repository initialize, and then we'll say um, we need to add, we need to add all this stuff. Okay, so we're gonna add keywords, library properties. Let's just make sure. This is all what we want it to be. ESP32, ESP32. Uh, just for kicks, let's do a control shift F and look for any references to 8266. There are none. Okay, so we wanna include all of these files. So we'll just do that and we'll say initial commit. We'll commit it. And then we're going to just get remote add like that. And then we're going to say git branch dash m main. And then we'll do git push dash u origin main. And now if we come back here and just hit F5, 
we have our ESP32 Arduino core deploy the fleet library. And so now let's grab this and Arduino. I think it's just on here issues. Let's see where I'm at. Here we go. Open two days ago. We'll come in here. And we'll say edit. So they can add both of them. Uh, we're going to add this again, just to make it clear. Could you please add the following libraries? All right. And so for those that have never created a Arduino library, that was obviously a fast version of it because I had something to work from, but that will, you come into the Arduino repo, you create a, uh, an issue with the library manager like this, and, oh, add the, yeah, component board limit. Yeah, so somebody will come through and they'll add these and then uh, you're all set. You should be, um, it'll appear in the actual uh, Arduino IDE. So that's really great. The next thing that I would do, which I don't have time to do tonight, um is we need to come back over to the website we spent all that time making um getting the 8266 quick start up and running so i'm going to have to come through i'll copy this just like i did the arduino library and i will do a version of the documentation that walks through the esp32 version of the quick start and um that should be all we we need to get to launch like like i said i i want to have quick starts for the esp idf but i'm going to just go with the 8266 and the 32 arduino core for now and like i said i just want people to start using it giving me feedback finding anything that's weird or um, things that we could improve on it so getting really close to launch um, and I also have to make some content for all of this, like a polished video of here's how you get started and things like that. So that is going to do it for the stream today. Apologies if you're watching this after the fact and the Twitch quality sucks because I was dropping frames. I've been having internet problems. So my apologies for that. I will upload, I've been recording it as well locally here. So I'll upload the, the master version to YouTube if you want to catch it over there um but uh yeah anyway that's gonna do it for today uh tune back in tomorrow i'm not sure what we'll be working on tomorrow i'll probably work on the um documentation not as a twitch stream and uh we'll see there'll be more of the process to show so tune in next time and in the meantime hope you have an awesome day